Is Antichrist in your church? If your pastor is teaching futurism, then Antichrist is in your church to some degree, either physically or in spirit. Futurism is a counter-Reformation doctrine concocted by Jesuit priests to convince Protestants that the Pope of Rome and his church are not the Antichrist spoken of in Scripture. Vehement Jesuit futurism pastors deny this fact, yet the evidence is plain, as I will prove. We can trace this dispensationalist futurist system back to Cardinal Ribera, a Jesuit priest who set the stage for the prophetic interpretive system now referred to as dispensational futurism, and he developed certain dispensational principles that were advanced by the Jesuit priest Manuel Lacunza, who wrote the book titled The Coming of Messiah in Glory and Majesty. This book, originally written in Spanish, was translated into English by Edward Irving, founder of the Apostolic Catholic Church. When Irving first became aware of Lacunza's book, he believed it was written by a converted Jew by the name of Rabbi Juan Yosafat ben Ezra, whose name appeared on the cover of the book. However, in time, Irving learned that the book was not written by a converted Jew, but by the Jesuit priest, Manuel Lacunza. We know this because Irving translated the book into English, and in his preface titled, Preliminary Discourse, he makes the statement, quote, The name Juan Yosafat ben Ezra was taken for a disguise, and that the true name of the author of the Spanish work was Lacunza, a Jesuit. Unquote. So we can see clearly that Irving attributes the principles of dispensationalism and futurism to a Jesuit priest. Yet having become enamored with the work, he seemed to care little that Ben Ezra was a fraud, conceived to hide the fact that a Jesuit was the true author. Despite its Jesuit origins, Irving continued to promote the book. On page 15 of his translation, Irving goes so far as to refer to Lacunza as my worthy master, Ben Ezra. Irving went on to teach Lacunza's dispensationalism at the Albury Conferences held between 1826 and 1830, where he referenced dispensationalism numerous times. In his writings, he stated, quote, I deem it my duty to make known these great results to the Christian churches. Unquote. He makes this statement in reference to Lacunza's work and the Albury Conferences. Thus, Irving knew he was teaching Jesuit futurism at the Albury Conferences. Dr. Charles Ryrie, in his book titled Dispensationalism, confirms this fact when he says of Charles Nelson Darby, quote, His interest was piqued through conferences at Albury, out of which the Irvingian movement grew, unquote. Thus we find Dr. Ryrie, a respected mid to late 20th century dispensationalist, confirming the lineage of dispensational interpretive methodology, tracing its course back from Darby to Irving. This is critical to our understanding of the Jesuit roots of dispensationalism and Jesuit futurism. Furthermore, we know that Irving, in his preference to Lacunza's book, clearly attributes the teachings of dispensationalism and subsequently futurism to the Jesuit Manuel Lacunza. After Darby, Schofield carried the burning torch of dispensationalism and futurism by publishing his Schofield Reference Bible, which has countless footnotes confirming this fact, all but directly quoting interpretations from Lacunza's book. For example, on page 301 of Lacunza's book, The Coming of Messiah in Glory and Majesty, the Jesuit futurist interpretation of Daniel 9.27 is given by Lacunza. It reads, quote, If the desolations of Jerusalem and her temple is to continue until the consummation and the end, at which time shall Antichrist build the city and the temple which the Romans have desolated? Unquote. This is the source of dispensationalist futurist doctrine of a future Antichrist, whether futurist pastors know it or not. When they teach a future rebuilt temple by Antichrist, they teach Jesuit futurism straight from the pages of the Jesuit priest Manuel Lacunza. 
This is the very doctrine taught by Irving at the Albury Conferences, where Darby was in attendance. This is the very same doctrine taught by C.I. Schofield on page 915 of his Reference Bible, where we also find the unbiblical concept of a so-called church age introduced by Schofield as a period of time otherwise called the Gap. It is interesting to note that Scripture teaches neither a church age per se nor a gap of undetermined length between Daniel's 69th and 70th weeks. That too is something that can be traced back through Darby, Irving, and before them to Lacunza. This fact is confirmed on page 316 of Lacunza's book, The Coming of Messiah in Glory and Majesty, where he makes the following statement, quote, But if this, not much after, be relative, then that time may be enlarged as much as they please. And there is no setting limits on how much the immediately in the text really implies. Unquote. Lacunza makes this statement in subtle reference to the idea that a great gap of time could exist between Daniel's 69th and 70th weeks. Before Lacunza, we can attribute the foundations of dispensationalism and futurism to the Jesuit priest, Cardinal Ribera. If listeners have any doubts about the Jesuitical lineage of dispensationalism and futurism, that notion is dispelled on page 16 of Clarence Larkin's landmark work, Dispensational Truth, which is also part of that dispensational lineage ascending from the Jesuit Ribera. Larkin states very clearly on page 16 that dispensationalism owes its origins to the Jesuit Ribera. And so, we can clearly trace the ideas of dispensationalism and Jesuit futurism back down the corridor of time from Larkin to Schofield, to Darby, to Irving, to Lacunza, and to the founder, Cardinal Ribera, the Jesuit priest commissioned by the Pope of Rome to dispel the Protestant Reformation teaching that the Pope of Rome and the Catholic Church are the Antichrist taught in Scripture. The reason I have made this video is to dispel the myth taught by most Jesuit futurist pastors that there is no link between futurism and the Jesuits. Clearly, pastors who teach this know nothing of history, and they deny the very writings of their predecessors that confirm that, in fact, futurism has its origins with the Jesuits. I suppose if Jesuit futurist pastors were better informed historically, they would not be futurists. Rather, they would be historicists. But that's a topic for another video. In closing, let me leave you with this. There are many sincere and true believers caught up in dispensationalism and Jesuit futurism. They've been taught it all their lives, and it's all they know. In fact, it's the predominant prophetic view among today's churches and pastors. So for those of us who know the truth, it is our job to tell it. And those who have ears to hear will hear, and others won't. So be it. Remember that most of us who know the truth about Jesuit futurism were also once deceived by that false system of belief. Yet we came out. So we must persevere, despite the fact that truth has never been popular. And those under the spell and dogma of futurism will say nasty things about us. And some will even condemn us to hell for not believing in futurism. I know because some of the most abusive language, hatred, and personal attacks against me have been from dispensationalists and futurists. But I encourage my listeners to understand that futurists are dogmatists of the worst kind. And when you come up against their sacred cow, they're not equipped to defend their position. So, as in all such debates, when one party cannot counter the other with reason and basic decency, it reverts to insults and personal attacks. So I caution my listeners who have not encountered this to be prepared for it. It will happen. 
For example, I recently read a blog from Dr. Chuck Baldwin, a former dispensationalist and futurist pastor, who was delivered from it. He said he was shocked at the abuses he received from those who formerly called him brother and declared their love for him. This is normal, so expect it. One last thing. Most pastors who teach futurism don't know that they are letting Antichrist into their churches. They teach futurism because they've been programmed, and it is popular, and the best way in most cases to attract a congregation. So don't be quick to believe that they are part of the Jesuit order. Most of them aren't. Rather, they are ignorant, but willing pawns in a diabolical game concocted by the Roman Catholic hierarchy to infiltrate Protestant churches and destroy the Protestant Reformation and bring all who identify with Christianity back under the authority of Rome. This is only possible if Protestants think the Antichrist is someone or something other than the Pope of Rome and his papal dynasty. Thank you for listening.